since something like the coronavirus affects every area of our lives, it's only right that we should expect to receive thorough and accurate information about it. And unfortunately, since our news media has been known to give misinformation and disinformation, it's hard to determine what is fake news and what is fact. And since platforms such as YouTube are starting to censor more and shut down or pull videos and information that they decide are misleading or are misinformation, it's getting harder and harder to be able to make a well-informed decision about things such as the coronavirus that affect us so much. So you really have to do your own research and look a little deeper. Well, what I'm about to show you, which by the way, others have tried to bring to light but have been shut down as their videos have been removed. But I believe this is evidence, evidence that this is not just a conspiracy theory, but it is a conspiracy. Thus, the name COVID-19. COVID-19. Hmm, covert ID? Anyway, moving on. So call it coincidence or call it conspiracy. But both the Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation laid out simulations of a worldwide pandemic where the entire world goes into shutdown restrictions. The goal was to engage how government, industry, and technology can fuse together during a worldwide crisis. What they laid out here is so eerily familiar to what we are actually going through right now. So I think it's more than worthwhile to look at these two, quote, exercises designed by these two philanthropic powerhouses. So in May of 2010, the Rockefeller Foundation, along with the Global Business Network, published scenarios for the future of technology and international development. You can read the entire document here. So lockstep is one of four scenarios for the future of technology and international development, which the Rockefeller Foundation and Global Business Network came up with in 2010 after a year of work by a large team. GBN is described by its founder, the U.S. American futurist Peter Schwartz, as a high-level networking and corporate research agency. Schwartz has worked for the Pentagon and has ties to the World Economic Council. He sits on the board of the Materialistic Center for a New American Security and is a member of the 21st Century Council of the Berggruen Institute and, de and develops ideas to shape political and social institutions. Here is the basic gist of their invented scenario. Lockstep, a world of tighter top-down government control and more authoritarian leadership with limited innovation and growing citizen pushback. In 2012, the pandemic that the world had been, had been anticipating for years finally hit. Unlike 2009's H1N1, this new influenza strain, originating from wild geese, was extremely virulent and deadly. Even the most pandemic-prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just 7 months, the majority of them healthy young adults. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, debilitating industries like tourism and breaking global supply chains. Even locally, normally bustling shops and office buildings sat empty for months, devoid of both employees and customers. Keep in mind, this was created in 2010 following 2009's H1N1 pandemic. This is even more interesting. The United States' initial policy of strongly discouraging citizens from flying proved deadly in its leniency, accelerating the spread of the virus, not just within the U.S., but across borders. However, a few countries did fare better. 
China in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of all borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of the virus far earlier than in other countries and enabling a swifter post-pandemic recovery. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions, from the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries of communal spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. In order to protect themselves from the spread of increasingly global problems, from pandemics and transnational terrorism to environmental crisis and rising poverty, leaders around the world took a firmer grip on power. Here's more from their document, from that document. At first, the notion of a more controlled world gained wide acceptance and approval. Citizens willing gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. Citizens were more tolerant and even eager for top-down direction and oversight, and national leaders had more latitude to impose order in the ways they saw fit. In developed countries, this heightened oversight took many forms. Biometric IDs for all citizens, for example, and tighter regulation of key industries whose stability was deemed vital to national interest. You can read that entire document right here. Scenario narratives lockstep. Let's look at the Gates Foundation, Event 201, together with John Hopkins University Center for Public Health and the World Economic Forum, they created a, top, a tabletop scenario exercise late last year described on the Center for Health Security website, which is here, Event 201 scenario. Event 201 simulates an outbreak of a novel zoonotic coronavirus transmitted from bats to pigs to people that eventually be becomes efficiently transmissible from person to person, leading to a severe pandemic. The pathogen and the disease it causes are modeled largely on SARS, but it is more transmissible in the community setting by people with mild symptoms. The disease starts in pig farms in Brazil quietly and solely at first, but then it starts to spread more rapidly in healthcare settings. When it starts to spread efficiently from person to person in the low income, densely packed neighborhoods of some of the mega, mega cities in South America, the epidemic explodes. It is first exported by air travel to Portugal, the United States, and China, and then to many other countries. Although at first some countries are able to control it, it continues to spread and be reintroduced, and eventually no country can make It continues to spread and be introduced, and eventually no country can maintain control. There's no possibility of a vaccine being available in the first year. There is a fictional antiviral drug that can help the sick, but not significantly limit the spread of the disease. Since the whole human population is susceptible during the initial months of the pandemic, the cumulative number of cases increases exponentially, doubling every week. And as the cases and deaths accumulate, the economic and societal consequences become increasingly severe. The pandemic is beginning, to, is beginning to slow due to the increasing number of susceptible people. The pandemic will continue at some rate until there is an effective vaccine or until 80 to 90 percent of the global population has been exposed. From that point on, it is likely to be an endemic childhood disease. Hmm. So it seems like, well, while both these scenarios don't exactly predict what's happening currently, there are so many creepy similarities. It seems like just reading this is like a review of what's going on now. It's like, so you have to wonder, you know, how much was known years ago 
before all this unfolded before our eyes. Remember, this lockstep here was designed in 2010. So you got to wonder, you know, was all this designed by the these same foundations that created those scenarios? Is it just coincidence? <laughs> it's a, a lot of coincidences. But I suggest you go and reading these, reading about these documents and draw your own conclusions. So what's the definition of a conspiracy? A secret plan made by two or more people to do something that is harmful or illegal. It sounds like a conspiracy to me, whether they planned to act like it was a pandemic or whether they created this virus. Sounds like they conspired to harm the people either way with it. In both these foundations, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Rockefeller Foundation are rich donors that are close to our government. They use their immense wealth and influence on the political and scientific elites and have increasing influence on the decision making and the global health agenda. So take it for what you will. I do believe this was all created to further their agenda for more control over the people to implement government owned schools and government owned businesses to create mandatory vaccines and Mm, create a microchip society for purchasing, travel, tracking, and controlling, and to end national sovereignty. And when you're diagnosed with any serious health-related matter, it's always good to get a second and sometimes even a third opinion. And the independent doctors and scientists and microbiologists should be allowed to run tests and to be able to report these uncensored and unbiased in the media so that we can all make well-informed decisions on all these matters that affect our lives so profoundly.